Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew and welcome back to Taito Ecology. We're starting fresh in the grasslands today to kick off a new series in this game where the goal will be to create and maintain a vibrant, thriving ecosystem using all the creatures at our disposal. We're going to uh, do our best to unlock all of our producers and consumers and uh, decomposers too. And uh, we're going to make sure that they can all live together under one unique biome. So uh, that should be pretty fun. And if you're interested in learning more about uh, how Tidal Ecology works, I'll leave a link in the description below to my previous episode on the game, which uh, goes into more about the basics and how to uh, start your first biome. But uh, for this one, I've decided to change the max time away to one month. So that means that one month is going to pass between every single episode that we do. We'll be able to see what works and what doesn't while we uh, journey to create our own balanced ecosystem here. So uh, without further ado, let's jump right in. And uh, I think the most important place to start would probably be our producers because <laughs> we can we can make consumers all day, but if we don't have anything for them to eat, then they're not going to last very long. So why don't we zoom out here and start throwing all sorts of plants around here uh, for our consumers to eat. There we go. We have some nice grass here. Let's get some milk vetch in here too. And uh, we'll do one of these too. The skunk bush sumac, I think. <laughs> A nice little bush for... Uh, some of our little herbivores to hide in. I think we'll probably start with the jackrabbits again because uh, that seems like a good place to start. We want to start at uh, a simple place because we could choose something more exotic like, a, I don't know, a frog or <laughs> a badger or something, but we might not have the type of food that they like to eat. I know some of them are insectivores, so they would eat insects. Uh, some of them are very, very small, so they can only eat certain types of uh, small creatures as well. But for now, let's take our jackrabbit here and let's put him right in the middle <laughs> of all this nice grass that we place. So he will be very, very happy with uh, his current location. I'm going to speed up the, uh, the time as well so we gather our energy up a little bit faster. <laughs> And of course, the next thing that we need to do is get our uh, our carnivores in here to keep our <laughs> rabbit population in check because they are going everywhere right now. Wow. <laughs> we have 12 rabbits already, 12 out of 20. So I think we definitely need some sort of uh, carnivore to come in and keep that under control. And I think we're going to use the red fox this time. Why don't we try out the red fox first? So let's put him uh, pretty close by somewhere uh, a, a decent distance away. And look at him, oh my gosh, these two, they're so pretty, look at those coats. <laughs> Hello, little guy. So he's brand new, of course, and so are bunnies over here, sleeping away. Oh, they're actually pretty hungry, poor little guys. Their hunger's going way down. I wonder what uh, they would like to eat here. I'm pretty sure I would assume it's just uh, grass, but we can take a look in here just in case we ever have a question about one of the animals that we've placed. Um, it says, jackrabbits are herbivores. They eat nearly any type of plant matter from leaves to roots to bark. These animals eat almost constantly. 15 jackrabbits can eat as much as a large cow in one day. Wow. <laughs> so it sounds like we just need a lot more uh, plants and grass in here for them. Otherwise, uh, they're going to run out of food very, very quickly. So we don't want that to happen. So let's uh, keep placing more grass all around here <laughs> so they have plenty to eat. There we go. I can't imagine that they're going to uh, run out anytime soon. Though the leaf bar is uh, very, very low on the blue grandma, grandma grass, I guess that's what that's called. So <laughs> maybe we want to pick something that has a little bit more coverage for uh, leaves. We have a couple flowers here, which we unlocked in the previous episode, though there's plenty more that we can take a look at here as we uh, go further into the game. And we are going to try to unlock every single thing here, and not just producers, the uh, consumers as well. There's a ton of different consumers that we can take a look at, even bison. Oh my goodness, that's probably going to be one of the last things that we unlock, it looks like. 150 Taito coins for that guy. <laughs> and uh, of course, our decomposers. Oh gosh, we definitely need some of those. I almost forgot about those. If we don't get uh, decomposers properly working around our area, then we will be full of waste 
and bones and all sorts of gross things. <laughs> it will take over our ecosystem and all of our animals here will become very, very sick and die off. So we definitely don't want that to happen. We have uh, three mushrooms scattered around here now, three groups of mushrooms anyway, I believe. Yeah, they come in uh, groups of 20, so that'll slowly build up over time and it should keep our detritus levels from rising too high. <laughs> is our little fox sleeping next to the bunnies? He is! Look at him! Aw, he has his head kind of buried in the ground, but that's okay! <laughs> and this little guy is not bothered at all. He's just running right past them, doesn't have a care in the world. <laughs> so let's see, what could we do next? Maybe uh, we should get some more jackrabbits in here just in case because we don't want the um, foxes to to uh, <laughs> destroy their entire little habitat here either. We want to make sure we have plenty for them to eat and uh, we want to make sure that we don't accidentally cause our little jackrabbits to go extinct in the meantime. <laughs> to get exterminated by our two little red foxes. So that's pretty good. Now we have two jackrabbit territories and we have a nice red fox right in the middle of them. We have a lot of mushrooms growing, which is also very good. And maybe we should take a look at, oh wow, we could unlock one of these trees here. I love the trees. I don't think we have a single one just yet. No, we don't. So maybe uh, we could unlock a tree here. Let's see. Western sand cherry, um, a big sagebrush, a eastern red cedar. Oh my gosh, I don't know which one to pick. <laughs> this one looks very, very big. Maybe we'll go with that one. Yeah, let's go with this one. That's going to look pretty nice in our territory, I think. Oh, it's a lot smaller than I thought it would be. <laughs> look how cute that is. <laughs> oh my gosh, it has a lot of leaves though, so that's good. Such a cute little tree. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we should put one a little bit closer to uh, our creatures, I think. That might be a good idea. Are our bunnies doing better? Let's see. Their hunger's going up. That's a good sign. Oh, it's going way up. Oh my goodness. I wonder if that tree helped them. I don't know. That That's a good thing, though. That's very good. I'm happy to see that. Yeah, that's that's good. <laughs> He's a little bit hungry now. Oh, there we go. We have our weekly income. So we earned five Taito coins. Um... Our diversity could definitely be a bit higher, but our health is very, very good. I don't think we can get much better than that. So we definitely need to, of course, look into uh, bringing more creatures into the area. Because right now we only have uh, two different types of uh, consumers in here. And we, we do have a, a bit of a spread of plants, so that's good to see. But we could definitely use more. It doesn't look like we'll be unlocking anymore anytime soon, but that's why we need to uh, build up our current population. So why don't we get some pollinators in here too? That would probably be a good idea. It would help our plants for sure. So let's put a couple moths around the area. One over here too, and we should probably uh, give these guys a little something to munch on because I just realized that I didn't put any plants near the poor jackrabbits over here. Oh my goodness, you poor guys. Let's get you some grass. There we go. Some of those. Whoops, is that a little bit too close? There we go. I think that's good. There. We oh no, now I moved over there. Well, that's fine. That's fine. The uh, moths could use some too and we'll put some milk fetch next to them. That's very nice. Some big, tall patches of uh, grass and bushes for them to hide in when they're <laughs> being chased by the uh, the foxes over here. There we go. So we used all of, well, almost all of our energy for now, so we just have to wait for that to build up before we can place any more. But I think these guys will be much, much happier <laughs> now that they actually have something to uh, eat over here. Oh, this guy's back. He's back already. Let's uh, Let's zoom in on him so we can take a look. <laughs> oh, he's running through the grass. Look at him go. He's so much happier. <laughs> he's running straight for that bush. He's like, all right, I'm going to hide in there. There he goes. <laughs> Scooting away. No one's going to find him. Oh, and it looks like the uh, fox is on the hunt over here. Whoa. Oh, yes. Is that is that a rabbit? That might be a rabbit. <laughs> Let's zoom out and uh, take a look. 
Yep, that's a dead jackrabbit. Okay. <laughs> the foxes are definitely getting their food now. That's a good thing. Let's see. Their hunger is just fine. 95% right there. 77. This guy needs to get something uh, to eat. Looks like he might be eating something, actually. Oh, yes, he is. <laughs> Look at that. We can actually see them eating. There we go. And he's going to curl up and go to sleep. That's adorable. <laughs> Has a, a nice full tummy now so he can uh, get some rest. Uh-oh, a uh, zone has reached detritus level two. The plants and animals are unaffected, it says, but we definitely want to take care of that before it gets any worse. So let's see. Can we tell uh, which one is being affected right now? Okay, the jackrabbits here are at level two. Um, okay, so all of these creatures are affected at the moment. So that means that we just need to get more uh, mushrooms and earthworms. Once we unlock them anyway, we'll uh, put more earthworms around here as well. But for for now, let's just worry about the uh, mushrooms. There we go. I placed uh, two more patches of mushrooms around here. Maybe I'll do one more <laughs> way back here. So there's a uh, Plenty of mushroom coverage in our grasslands. We have mushrooms basically growing in every corner of this part of the biome. There's more that we can unlock too. You see these uh, walls up on both sides of this area. This entire thing is just a big circle. If I click here, you can see that uh, we can unlock all of these different zones once we get enough uh, Taito coins, which, uh, whoops, don't confirm that, <laughs> which we certainly don't have enough of right now. But eventually we will unlock all of these up to zone five and uh we will try our best to maintain this it's uh going to be a little bit tricky especially with a uh, whole month passing in between each episode but i figured that would keep it interesting it would help us discover uh exactly what works and what doesn't and what we need to work on as we create our biome so let's see what else can we add here can we add some of these flowers maybe they're kind of hard to see is that, these are the flowers right here, I think? There they are, the uh, Heath Aster. Their blooming is not pollinated. Okay, so maybe we need to make sure that um, our pollinators are close by so they can help these little flowers out. Oh, it says a zone has reached detritus level one. There we go, so our mushrooms took care of it and now we uh, don't need to worry about our, uh, our mushrooms, or we don't need to worry about the waste taking over our biome. So that is very good. I'm happy to hear that. And maybe we should put some uh, little purple cone flowers here too. These are beautiful. I love these. Oh my goodness. <laughs> They're going to brighten up the place for sure. <laughs> the fox likes them anyway. Look at him go. Oh, I think he's chasing that rabbit. Uh-oh. <laughs> I think he's going to catch you, little guy. Yep. There he goes. Our fox is definitely taking care of uh, our rabbit population, which is a, it sounds a little bit harsh, but it's definitely what we need to happen so they won't uh, completely overrun our biome here. Okay, I think I'm going to place some ants around here as well because they're scavengers. So if there's any uh, dead carcasses left around the place, then I would think that they would probably come in and uh, take care of that for us which will also help us with the waste problem. Um, we don't want bones and <laughs> and uh, rotting carcasses around our uh, biome at any point in time. So it would definitely be a good idea to do that. Oh my gosh, <laughs> this guy is so cute. Look at him just curled up sleeping. Oh, we have another weekly income. Nine Taito coins this time, so we're doing better. Doing definitely better. Okay, so our diversity score is almost at six now. And it looks like the health is still very, very high. So that is good. There we go. Look at this guy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oops, I didn't mean to wake you up. I'm sorry. Poor little guy. There you are. Is he off on the uh, hunt again? I see his buddy up there. Up there by the flowers that we planted. I think he's going after more rabbits. <laughs> we want to make sure that they don't completely destroy our jackrabbit population too. Um, it looks like we have 10 on this side and we have... Oh, we have six on that side. Uh-oh. <laughs> I think these foxes are getting a little bit too hungry if that's the case. They uh, destroyed about half of their population already. That is crazy. So maybe we need to think about bringing another group of jackrabbits into the area just in case. We don't want them to uh, 
completely go away. That wouldn't help us at all. So there we go. We have a third bunch of jackrabbits, and I hope that will help balance things out. That's that's mainly what this game is about. It's about balance. <laughs> so you have to strike the right balance between all of your different critters until uh, it works out for you, I guess, until everything can uh, be maintained on its own. I want to put another uh, big sagebrush around here. <laughs> they call it big, but uh, it's a little bit tiny. <laughs> it is adorable. Let's put it. Uh, let's put it over here by the foxes. The foxes don't really have much to do over here in their area of the biome, so let's give them uh, maybe some grass too to play around in when they feel like it. There we go, a nice little grass field for our foxes. <laughs> we have tons of grass here, but that's good because it is the grassland, so that makes sense. Actually, maybe we should put some of these little flowers over here too. I should see how these are doing now actually as well. Um, let's make sure that these... Okay, they are pollinated now, so that's good. That means that our little moths are able to reach them. I thought so because they had a very, very big territory, a very large spread. So I, I couldn't imagine that they wouldn't be able to reach those little flowers on the hill. <laughs> I'm going to add a, another little group of ants over here too. We want to make sure we have plenty of these guys. Ants will definitely help our uh, biome continue to thrive. The jackrabbits are still at 6 out of 20 right now, so the foxes haven't uh, <laughs> completely destroyed them yet. I see they're lurking around these poor guys over here, though. Um, these are at 9, and how many do we have over here? 11. Okay. So the foxes certainly eat a lot of rabbits. My goodness, I hope they'll be able to survive um, the, the month that will pass before we get to the next episode. That will be interesting to see. I'm not sure if we will need to add more jackrabbits in the future to sustain our little red foxes. It's, uh, something that we're going to have to learn. And I think, uh, <laughs> I think that is a good spot to leave this episode. So we've placed tons of different plants and, uh, creatures. We have our little moths pollinating our flowers here, and we have three separate groups of jackrabbits uh, populating the area. We have some ants taking care of the bones and carcasses and whatnot, and we have tons and tons of little mushrooms growing all around the place to help keep the waste in check. And it seems to be working because it already went down by one level in this one episode, so I hope I'm fingers crossed <laughs> that we won't come back in the next episode to find that everything has died off. But even if we do, then we can uh, figure out a way to fix that for the next one. So for now, um, I think that's it. And I will see you all next time. <laughs> Bye.